Setting the stage uh, with respect to Bombardier, uh, we see ourselves very clearly as the leader in the, uh, in the regional aircraft space, uh, which we define as 60 to 100 seats, being uh, the only manufacturer to provide not only a regional jet, but also a turboprop. Not only a turboprop, but also a regional jet. Um, so we're covering the space broadly, all the way from, from 60 to 100 seats, and even a little bit beyond with our CRJ-1000. In terms of our presence, as you can see, we're, we're well and truly the leader in the European market, um, with uh, approximately 460 aircraft in service in this particular region. Um, and overall, with approximately or over 50 customers, um, and that goes from you can see Greenland in the northwest all the way down to Georgia in the southeast, and from uh, Sata and the Azores on, on the on the southwestern side all the way to Aurora and Yakutia in, in the in the Russian Far East. So we've got the whole area covered and everything in between, and of course that expands into. Uh, into other parts of the world also. Uh, we've now delivered over um, 3,200 regional aircraft, a combination of the, the, the Q family and the, uh, and the CRJ family. Um, and those aircraft uh, are operating with uh, over 250 operators around the world now nowadays, which gives us approximately 35% market share in the, uh, in the regional space. An interesting statistic, uh, every three seconds, there is a Bombardier aircraft uh, taking off or landing somewhere around the world. So you know, there's, there, there's a lot of presence out there. Now, talking a little more about what we've done over the past few years, um, both the CRJ and the Q400, I'm not going to segregate, uh, are all about continuous improvement. So we, we brought over the past 10 years um, improvements in terms of fuel burn, you'll see a variety. Yeah, see a variety of fuel burn improvements uh, all over the place here. Um, in particular, the CRJ, we've improved something like six and a half percent in terms of fuel burn since the introduction of the uh, the next gen family in 2008. We've also brought significant um, reductions in maintenance costs, and, and we made an announcement just a couple of weeks ago, the RA concerning the. Uh, 800 uh, flight hour A check interval, 8,000 flight hour C check interval, um, which we're, we're implementing, and likewise implementing both both the um, the CRJ and the Q400. Uh, we've made over time significant productivity improvements. Uh, the latest one being on the Q400, the 90 seater. Uh, not only is the Q400 a very fast aircraft, a, an aircraft that's able to, to land in, in very difficult airfields, but we've now basically increased the capacity of the Q400 by up to 15%, which results in basically 15% um, improvement on, uh, on uh, cost per, in cost per seat. So that's for productivity. Um, in terms of operational improvements, a number of improvements we made over time, uh, for instance, uh, RMP and, and, and steep approach. Uh, and, and a few others, and obviously at the end of the day it's all about the passenger, so let's not forget about the passenger, and there'll be a big section about that here. We've improved comfort significantly on both families, um, most recently with the, the atmosphere cabin on the CRJ, um, and other little details I would say, like uh, in-flight in uh, in flight entertainment, uh, Wi-Fi and, and, and GoGo in particular. Uh, recent news, the 90-seat turboprop, it is now reality. We launched it uh, back in 2016. Uh, we have delivered the first aircraft to SpiceJet uh, last month in September. Um, and so it's a reality operating with, uh, with SpiceJet in India and very successfully. And, and we're, we're seeing definitely a trend in, in upgaging uh, for turboprops. And uh, there's, there's a great appetite now from airlines around the world uh, for greater capacity. And just as a demonstration of that, um, you can see all our recent orders, uh, the last 75 orders basically for, um, for the Q400 have been 
high capacity um, variants. So spike, oops, sorry, there. wrong button. Many wrong buttons. <laughs> uh, you get a preview. Uh, so SpiceJet 90, uh, 90, 90 seats, and we have 25 of those on, on firm order, plus options. Um, Philippine Airlines is a very interesting one. They only have 86 seats, but they actually have a business class section at the front with 34-inch pitch. Knock Air, uh, who was the, the, the previous record holder at 86 seats, and uh, Ethiopian. Ethiopians be a long, long time customer on the Q400. They keep taking more, but they are also um, increasing the capacity of the aircraft that they're taking. So we're now up to 82 seats, and that's a, that's a true two class. <clears throat> so, next, atmosphere. And we're very proud of uh, atmosphere. I don't know if some of you had the opportunity to, to see the aircraft, the real thing at Farnborough, at the air show. Uh, that was the first aircraft which we also delivered in September to Delta and SkyWest. Um, and, and recently we presented the mock-up at the uh, Regional Airlines Association in, in Long Beach. Um, so I think we have at this stage... No? Hi, my name is Chris Mayer. I'm one of the chief pilots for SkyWest Airlines, and I'm here in Miraville today at the Momardier factory to take delivery of the very first CRJ900 with the atmosphere cabin. I've been involved in delivery with Bombardier for 25 years. We started in 1993. The relationship we've had with Bombardier has been a, a very good relationship. Uh, been involved in most of the deliveries since then. Um, it's evolved over the years, and I think the improvements have been great. The legroom from the exit road back is tremendous. So anybody that gets in this airplane, they're going to be pleased with what they have in their product. As a pilot, uh, we are very excited to be able to fly a brand new airplane. Uh, I don't know a pilot that I've ever met that uh, isn't excited about any experience like this. I can tell you that uh, I certainly am, and we're really looking forward to it, flying this airplane home and putting it into service. slightly jumpy video. Um, anyway, just going into a little more detail on what atmosphere is about. So we've, we've basically redesigned the cabin. We've redesigned the, um, the bins, which is the, the most apparent and, and uh, um, the, the element that was most demanded. So I'll come back to that in a second. We've uh, redesigned the lighting. Uh, very importantly, we've redesigned the entire entrance, galley, and lavatory area, all of which is designed to, to improve the flow, make the cabin uh, much more appealing uh, to, uh, to the passenger, but also much more functional in, in terms of the lavatory, the galley, and, and the overhead uh, the cabin volume and overhead storage. <coughs> so you can see the very sleek, clean lines throughout the cabin. This is, this is your typical um, North American configuration with, with two class, a proper first class at the front, three abreast, and then and then four breasts at, at the back, so you see the, the little dog leg in the middle with the uh, with the uh, the change in bins between the front end and the back. But obviously in Europe, uh, you typically have the same the same bins and four breasts uh, throughout. But it exists; it can be done, and, and it, it makes a big difference. <clears throat> so what we're trying to do here is improve the passenger experience and make it truly seamless for the passenger that's, that's um, transferring from. Uh, short haul to long haul, long haul to short haul. <clears throat> so carry-ons, that's very important. What we've done is um, we have significantly increased the, um, the accessibility of the bins and the height of the bins. So effectively, think of your largest US passenger carry-on bag, it fits. Um, I'm going to say even more, think of your largest US passenger carry-on bag, 
will fit wheels first in the in the first class and business section. Um, if if a, a carrier is to choose uh, the three of rest configuration at the front, like Delta, like American, um, so either way we can we can fit the, the largest bags, the largest carry on rollerboard bags in the bin, and basically we're at a level now where there is one of those by uh, per passenger, basically. So the the whole concept of gate check that was often associated with regional aircraft, basically we're doing away with that. Um, so that's that's absolutely absolutely key. And, and meanwhile, you know, not not taking away from the the passenger experience in the cabin. The entrance area, I referred to that. Um, we've made it uh, much more airy. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have the mock-up here, but hopefully you'll get the opportunity to visualize the mock-up of the aircraft itself. Now, when you enter the aircraft, you have a direct view, natural um, uh, channel towards, towards the cabin. Whereas before, you actually entered this slightly cluttered galley area, and only then did you see down the aisle. And sometimes there was a bit of a dog leg also, in particular in those two class configurations. Now you've got a much cleaner view as well as rounded angles, uh, a pretty, pretty friendly area if, if the airline wants to install a sort of self-service bar. And uh, a first in the, in the regional aircraft industry, we have a PRM lab, so a handicapped lab, basically passenger with reduced mobility, uh, which is up to 60% larger than the lab we had previously on the CRJ. Um, so more more room that way, more room that way, and since we've actually um, increased the size of the unit, basically moved out from here to here, you actually have more height also because you're moving closer to the center line of the aircraft. Other changes we've done, I referred to earlier, um, doesn't sound like much, but those maintenance intervals are huge, 800 uh, flight hours for HX, 8,000 hours for, for C checks. Um, so uh, that is significantly increasing the productivity of the aircraft. As you can see, 14% less maintenance days throughout the life of the aircraft, and that equates to about $300,000 savings per aircraft. That's real value, that's real money. <clears throat> Another change that we implemented, um, uh, feedback from the customers, particularly in North America, there were some situations in summertime with extreme temperatures, you know, global warming, warming we're adapting to that. We've certified the CRJ now to ISA plus 40 degrees. So you're really taking care of the most extreme situations that, that we've seen encountered in the, uh, particularly in the, in the southwestern US region. And therefore, American is the first customer, and that is already in service as of, uh, 